So you're a professional actor and you just got an audition. What the hell to do? Well, in this video, I'm going to explain the entire audition process to you, what to expect, what to do, and what not to do. Hey everybody, my name is Chad Rook and thank you so much for tuning in to Acting with Chad Rook where I again take my 20 plus years of experience, yes I am that old, and I take all the tips and tricks that I've learned along the way from acting coaches, experience, which is the biggest one, and all my mistakes that I made along the way so that you don't have to make those same mistakes and you can take those tips and become a successful actor yourself. If this is your first time at my channel and you love the acting industry or you're an actor yourself and you just want to fine tune your talent or maybe you know learn a few things along the way that uh, will help you out as an actor yourself, then click that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so that you know exactly when I post new videos and we can all learn together and kick some ass along the way. So, you're at home sitting around watching an episode of Friends or whatever it is that you watch and binge watch at home and you get a phone call from your lovely agent saying, guess what, Chad? You got yourself an audition tomorrow morning, okay? You look at the clock, guess what? It's six at night and they just sent you a three-page audition for tomorrow morning. If you get two to three pages you're lucky, okay? When you get in the advanced stages of your career as an actor, you can, you can plan on having auditions from anywhere from one page to 15 to, to even more pages of an audition that you're gonna have to prep, in some cases, in one day. Now, these are skills and, trips and, and tricks and stuff that you're gonna have to learn along the way on how to, to, to memorize it, how to prep it, how to prepare it, and uh, I'll have videos for you guys down the road that will help you along the way to do all that, okay? But in this video, I'm gonna tell you exactly what to expect in these auditions so that you're prepped and ready to go as much as possible. You get the audition request, it's a three-page audition for tomorrow morning, okay? The agent will then send you an email, which is called a breakdown, which is gonna have a few things on it, okay? It's gonna have uh, who is involved, usually the production. You'll find out the director, the producers normally, uh, where it's shot. A lot of times it's going to tell you the dates as when they're filming so that you can prep and let them know if whether or not you're available. They'll also give you a character breakdown. And normally what that means is that it's going to tell you the character that you're auditioning for and uh, just a brief explanation of what they are. That's really the information that you're going to have to go on uh, in regards to prepping for that audition and, and creating that character. So a lot of times what they'll say is say, um, you're reading for a character named Jake, age 30 to 35, uh, male, say Caucasian, blonde hair, blue eye guy, okay, perfect, I'm, I'm awesome, I'm, that's, that's, that's for me, okay? And then the, the description will say, you know, uh, he's got a sister that he's protecting and he's a drug dealer and he's had problems in the past, yada, yada, yada. It'll just give you that. So you'll have to go use that little brief description in creating what they want for your audition. Then aside from just memorizing the lines for an audition, you're going to have to prep what you're going to look like. Now, a lot of people say that you need to look the part. Yes, you do need to look the part. Remember, when you walk into that audition, okay, a lot of times, in, in, in some cases, nine out of 10 times, you're going to lose that audition before you've even said a word because it's first impressions. If you walk into a room and you do not look the part, a lot of times it's going to be stuck in the casting directors or directors or producers' heads that you're just not the, for the, right for the part. because And it doesn't matter how good your actual audition is. If that's in their head, a lot of times you've already lost the role. This doesn't mean that if, for example, you're auditioning for an astronaut that you need to come in for with a space suit. That if it's a firefighter that you need a firefighter suit. Okay, That's not what I'm saying. Dress to suggest, meaning... Wear basic neutral colors that represent the role. So say, for example, I'm auditioning for a nurse. Hi. 
well, maybe all I would need to wear for a nurse is a gray t-shirt, okay? It's just kind of a neutral color. You don't need to go out and buy slacks that a nurse would wear or anything like that. Just suggested that, okay, yeah, he could be a nurse because auditions, again, they're gonna be filmed from about here up and you're probably not gonna see your pants ever in an audition anyway. Now, you've got your audition request, you've told your agent, yes, I'll be there, you've prepped your audition, you've memorized your lines, you've picked out your clothing, and you're ready to go. Get some sleep, don't go out partying, because trust me, if a tired brain goes into an audition, that tired brain is gonna forget shit quick. I don't remember. And if you go on an audition and you just mess it up, you've just messed up your chances of getting the role. So don't, it's not worth it. Stay in, be professional, take yourself seriously so that other people can take yourself seriously as well. Now, it's the day of the audition. Here's what you can expect from a typical audition. Now, keep in mind, every audition is going to be slightly different, okay? First and foremost, do not be late. If you are late to an audition, you are immediately on the back burner of that casting director's uh, favoritism list because you are wasting their time and you're just basically showing them that you might show up late on set and if on set you're late, that costs a lot of money. Do not be late. Show up early. Do whatever possible, okay, to get to that audition early. Now, when you go into the audition room, there's gonna be a few things that you're gonna expect. A lot of times they're gonna have a sign up sheet where you're gonna to have to enter your name, the time of audition, usually your union number if you have one. If you don't, you can just leave it blank, don't worry. We'll get to that in other videos. Basically, you wanted to sign off saying, I'm here, this is my time, and I showed up on time. Over right here, I'm here. Over here. It's okay. Also, make sure that you bring your professional headshot and your resume to every single audition you go to. If you don't have a resume or a headshot printed out and ready to go, then you're not taking your career seriously. You need to have an abundant amount of headshot and resumes ready to go. Just keep in mind, you might have two or three auditions in a day and you need to bring headshots and resumes to every single one of them, not just a few of them because you only printed out one. No, you need to have these professional headshots and resumes ready to go every single day of your career because you don't know when the auditions are gonna come in, but you can guarantee and sure as shit believe that they are going to want your headshot and resume at the auditions. Sometimes you'll go into an audition and it'll have a sign saying, headshots and resumes are not being accepted today, please keep them. That's great, fine, but you still came prepared so it's not your fault. You're now in the waiting room waiting for your audition. There are gonna be other actors in that room. I cannot stress enough how important it is, even if you know the other actors, give them a quick hi, whatever. Do not interact with them uh, before your audition. It will mess up your head, okay? Auditions are very hard. They require a lot of concentration. You've studied the material. It's all stuck in your head. And now you're sitting there talking to a friend about his hot date last night. And guess what? Whoop! They call you in the room and everything that you just planned and studied for all night is gone. You now go into the room blank. All blank and no blank makes blank a blank blank. <laughs> Do not wreck your chances at an audition simply because your friend Jacob decided to tell you how hot his date was. It doesn't make any sense. Don't do it. So what you're gonna do is a lot of times you either wait in the audition room, mind your own business, stick to yourself, or go out in the hallway until they call your name. Just recapping you know, the material, running it through your head. This is the perfect time for you to get rid of the butterflies that are constantly going in your stomach before an audition. Go out and do the crappy version of your auditions and stuff. The first auditions, usually when you do it, a lot of times they're rough. So go out in the hallway and get that out of the way so that when you go into the room, you're prepped. All those mistakes are gone and you're ready to kick some ass. They call your name. You go into the room. Welcome. Hey, I'm Chad Rook. I'm at the audition. No, 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 no. You go into the room and you be 
professional, okay? Be likable. I can't stress enough how important it is for them to like you the first second you walk in the room. Don't go into the room acting like the character. Be yourself. Also, one of the biggest mistakes an actor can do is shake the hands of a casting director. Do not shake their hands. Keep it professional. This isn't a friendship, okay? This is a professional relationship. Do not shake their hands. Plus, also, you gotta keep in mind, these casting directors are seeing hundreds of actors every day, okay, for the same roles. Do you think that they wanna shake your gritty little hands and stuff and then who knows where those things have been? They don't wanna do that for actor after actor after actor. Can I give you a hug? No, thanks. Please? No, thanks. A little one. Yeah, no, thanks. Just say hello, be professional, and get on with the audition. What to expect when you're in the audition room? Well, simply put, normally there's going to be a few things. There's going to be the casting director, there's going to be the camera operator, and there's going to be the reader who's going to read the scene and the sides with you in the audition. On the floor, normally, there's going to be a T mark, okay? That is where you're going to stand. Sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes before your audition, they're going to ask you to slate. What a slate is, is basically you stating your name and height. Hi there, my name is Chad Rook and I'm six foot one. Done, that's it, okay? If they want any other specifics, sometimes they'll ask you for your agency, sometimes they'll ask you uh, what country or, or location you're based out of, but normally if they ask you just for a slate, it means name and height, that's it. Simple, keep it simple, keep it short, keep it positive. If you go into an audition with any sort of ego or chip on your shoulder, or you look just like a, a dick that they're not, they're not gonna work with, they're not gonna cast you. Plain and simple, chances are very good that the casting director might not even like you enough to even send your audition tape to the producers and directors for them to review. Now they say, okay, go ahead and start whenever you're ready. Stay on that T mark and do your audition. Make sure you have eye contact with the reader, okay? And one of the biggest tips that I can say about eye contact is that if the, re if the reader is on the right side of the camera, okay, which means that they're facing you there to your left, then your right eye wants to focus on their right eye. That means it's the furthest eye away from the camera that you're gonna focus on. What this does is I see right now, I'm looking straight on the camera, okay? It just has, makes it look, you know, just very square. But if I look just to the right, it now gives me a nice jawline, it gives me a nice angle, and I'm also not looking into the camera. If I look at their left eye, which is the closest eye, and sometimes when I'm doing actions and stuff, a lot of times it's very easy because I'm looking at their closest eye for me to jot that camera, and that's not what you wanna do in your audition, okay? You wanna make sure that you're not looking into that camera because that's a professional thing to do. So, if the reader is on the right side of the camera, Right eye to right eye. Gives you the nice look. Auditions are all about looks. You wanna look amazing, and this is gonna help you. If they're on the left side of the camera, then your left eye is gonna to wanna to focus on their left eye. You now have an amazing jawline, nice angles, they can see your bone structure, but they can still see your whole face, and you're preventing the possibility of jotting that camera during your audition. It looks better, it, it looks like you're in the scene, you're focused on the reader is what you should be focused on, and it's just gonna look better. So, you've done your audition, and guess what? During your audition, you f up, okay? That's okay. It's okay to mess up. But one thing, a little trick that you can do, a little nugget, okay, if you will, that I've learned along the way is that normally in auditions, you can have one strike. Now, from this moment on, you as an actor will never, ever, ever, ever in an, in an audition admit that you messed up, that you made a mistake. That will never ever come out of your mouth in an audition. If you mess up, what you're gonna do is just be like, you know that you've messed up, so instead of saying, oh shit, or oh damn, I forgot, uh, can I start all over again? No, that's you admitting that you've messed up. So instead, if you do mess up, what you're gonna do is just be like, actually, you know what, I'm sorry, I just wanna just try something else for you guys, okay? Uh, do you mind if I start over? Thank you. What that's doing is buying you a strike. You're a very smart individual. It's basically you messing up 
but you're starting and giving yourself a second chance on your terms. It's a way of you buying yourself out of a mistake. Now, this isn't baseball, folks. <laughs> You don't get three strikes. You just bought yourself one. So if you do that, don't mess up again. One of the biggest tips that I am ever gonna give to you guys is to add to your audition a simple thing that I call a button, okay? And what that means is that every audition you do should be a mini movie. It should have a beginning, it should have a climax and it should have an end. And it is your job as an actor to take the size that they've given you and create that mini movie. A button is going to add something to your audition at either the beginning or the end, normally the end, which is a little bit of an improv in character that will add to the scene and give it a little bit more entertainment value. A lot of times if it calls for it, if it's not a heavy drama or anything, you want to make sure that your button makes them laugh. So prep a button in line with your character and in line with the scene that will either make them laugh, make them chuckle, make your audition memorable, and make it different than everyone else's that's going to come in the room. This will also help you give a nice close to your audition. Now, how do you give that nice intro and how do you give that nice outro? It's simple. Walk into the audition at the beginning and walk out. It gives you a nice introduction. Okay, we're about to start and it gives you a nice outro. So when you go into the audition, make sure that you talk to the casting director and especially to the cameraman because this is what I call owning the room. It's so important. So when you start your audition, you're just basically gonna say to the cameraman, hey man, just so you know, I'm gonna be walking in on this or I'm gonna be walking out. Or sometimes you might wanna, if you're gonna be moving around a lot, you wanna let them know that too, okay? What that's gonna do is a couple things. First of all, it's gonna show that you are now owning the room. You are in control of your audition. You are setting it up that like in the way that you want to make it the best possible audition that you can. If you tell them that you're going to walk in and you're going to walk out, that camera is going to stay here on the where the T mark is so that it allows you to walk into frame and allows you to walk out of frame. Okay, so that it gives you that nice intro, gives you that nice outro. If you're moving around, let them know that so that they can follow you with the camera if you're moving around. The last thing you want is being like, hey man, what do you want? Eh? What are you doing? Yeah, yeah. No, that's not what you want. You want to make sure that the cameraman knows you're going to be moving around so that they can follow you and again, give you the best audition. And not only does this help the way your audition looks, but this also shows the casting director that you are confident and you know exactly what you want from the audition and exactly how you want to portray it to the casting director, to the directors, to the producers, and that you have come fully prepared and are ready to go. This is what every professional actor should be doing because it shows confidence and it shows that you know what the hell you're doing as an actor. So go into the room, be confident, be likable, talk to the cameraman and make sure that your eye is in direct contact with that reader when you're doing your scene. Right eye to right eye if they're on the right side of the camera, left eye to left eye if they're on the left side of the camera. These are simple steps that you need to take and that are really gonna help you out in your audition. You've now finished your audition and it went great. You leave the room. Now, if you want, now is a perfect time to interact with your friends in the waiting room. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and screw up their auditions if you want if they want to talk go ahead do it as long as it's before their auditions and not before yours just another little tip that might work in your favor okay so you finished your audition now what well, the casting director is going to look through the auditions that they've had that day for certain roles. They're gonna cipher through them. Sometimes if an audition is really bad or it didn't go well, the casting director might not even send those off uh, with the lot of auditions that they had that day. So sometimes if you audition, 
you might not even have your audition sent. So make sure that you're on point with your auditions so that the chances of it actually getting submitted and sent off to the, the powers that be will see your audition. The casting director then sends off your audition to the producers or the directors and then they wait to hear from them. The directors and producers will then watch all the audition tapes and choose who they want. They then contact the casting director, say, you know what, Chad was amazing, we want him for that role. They tell the casting director, the casting director then calls your agent, your agent then calls you, <laughs> I got the role. Be patient. Okay, sometimes you'll hear the same day, sometimes you hear the next day. I've had auditions that I've booked that I actually was notified three months after my audition. I didn't even know when they called us and said that they wanted me for the role. I thought it was for something that I, uh, that I auditioned for recently. You just don't know when those calls are gonna be coming because you don't know how fast that production is gonna be moving. Sometimes there's things that halt the production during casting and that might prevent them from calling you uh, between one week or again, like I said, three months. You just don't know, okay? So don't get down on yourself. If you haven't heard right away, you just don't know. If for example, a week has passed, normally within a week of the audition, you will hear. If you haven't, a lot of times you can talk to your agent and let them know, hey, can you please maybe follow up with casting to see. Your agent can then contact casting to see if whether or not you've been booked or not. A lot of times they'll give you an answer right then and there. If you do not book a role, they don't let you know normally, okay? Again, the old saying, no news is good news. Okay, yeah, because maybe they haven't made a decision on someone else, but normally no news is good news doesn't exist in the acting industry. Normally no news means no role. Get used to rejection in this industry and don't take auditions personal. You will sometimes lose roles to so many aspects and stuff that is completely out of your control. Sometimes you'll lose an audition simply because they decided to go with an entirely different look. Um, I'm blonde hair, blue eyes, okay? So sometimes uh, I'm reading for a role and the writers and stuff maybe made some changes and now uh, they want an Asian guy for the role or maybe they want a darker skinned guy for the role. Uh, that's out of your control. You just go in, rock out the audition, and if you did good, chances are at least it's going to show the casting directors that you're talented and they'll bring you back for future auditions. Don't be discouraged if you don't get the character or you don't get the booking because a lot of times it's out of your hands and it has nothing to do with your talent. A lot of times, maybe you look like the ex-husband of a producer's wife and they don't like you. It can simply be down to things like that and it sucks and this industry is hardcore and it just drives you crazy, but there's nothing you can do. You can just shake your head, laugh at it, move on to the next audition. And as long as you're kicking ass and doing all the work that you possibly can to making that audition the best thing, then sooner or later, you're gonna land that role is simply put. I can't tell you the feeling that you get when you get that phone call saying that you booked a role. The adrenaline is crazy, but it is so worth all the work and effort that you've put in, all the patience, all the rejection that you've gone through. So just keep at it, because trust me, it is worth it when you get that call. So congratulations. Now what happens, huh? Well, your agents will do the negotiations with your casting directors, figure out how much you're gonna get paid, what the role is gonna be, how many days, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They're then gonna confirm with you that it's okay to sign off on. Once everybody's happy and everybody agrees, you sign off on it and the role is yours. You then go to set and kick some ass as an actor and have some of the most fun that you could possibly have in any job whatsoever. That's it guys, that is the audition process in a nutshell. I hope it helped you out and if it did, please hit that subscription button and that notification bell so that you can know when my next video is out so that I can give you more tips and tricks as to what to do as an actor in the audition room, outside of the audition room, and so that you can hopefully find success as an actor. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please also leave comments below as to what topics and stuff you guys want me to make videos for as I wanna help you out and make sure that I'm answering things that you guys really wanna know, okay? I'm Chad Rook, thank you again so much for tuning in to Acting with Chad Rook. You guys are awesome, now go kick some.